part of Linux commands for beginners, in this section of module, we'll go through the details related to getting started with Linux shell commands. We'll start with running our first command, then we'll actually get into the details about using help to get usage of a given Linux command. Once we go through those details, we'll get a high level overview about files and folders in Linux. Also, we'll understand the concepts behind fully qualified or absolute path as well as relative path of files and folders. Keep in mind that this is just getting started with Linux shell commands. In this, we'll only cover those aspects which are common across all the sections or modules. The topics such as files and folders and also the absolute or relative paths are relevant with almost all the sections in this course and hence we'll be focusing only on those things. Also, I will actually go through the details about overview of history of Linux shell commands and also how to navigate through the history to get the commands which are already used earlier. Beyond this, we'll cover quite a few other stuff, but over a period of time, you will be learning all these things in detail. Once we understand how to get started with Linux shell commands, then we'll actually get into the details such as listing files and folders in a Linux file system using commands such as ls, also how to filter files and folders in Linux file system using commands such as find. Then we'll see how to process data in files using commands such as cat, then we have other commands also to process data in files such as cut, sort, unique, etc. Then we'll actually go through the details about understanding file and folder properties. Then we'll actually get into managing files and folders in Linux, so and so forth. There will be quite a few sections or models which will be covering almost all the important aspects of Linux for beginners, especially from the commands perspective. Keep in mind that this is not the course related to shell scripting and hence there will not be too much of emphasis on shell scripting as part of this course where we are going to cover all the Linux commands for beginners. As we are ready with the Linux virtual machine on top of Windows, let's understand what happens when we get into that uh, virtual machine. If you are using uh, Linux based desktop directly, you should be able to log in and uh, the interface will be similar to what I am going to use for the demonstrations. First, let's confirm the virtual machine which we are going to connect by running wsl-l-v. You can see that there is only one uh, virtual machine which is set up using Ubuntu-20.04 distribution. It is default, you can see star here. It is important to observe this if you have multiple virtual machines. If you just say WSL, it will connect to the default uh, virtual machine that is set up using respect to distribution. Now we should be able to run. It will take care of logging in into the virtual machine which was set up earlier. When it comes to Ubuntu based desktops, when you actually log in, it will take you to the home directory and you might see the uh, graphical user interface. On uh, uh, Ubuntu based desktops, there will be a terminal. You can open the terminal. Once you open the terminal, the interface will be similar to this. However, you will be in the default home directory of the user, not in this directory. In this case, as this is running on top of Windows, the path with respect to the default directory is a little bit different. If you actually launch terminal on your Ubuntu based desktop, then you will be getting into some other directory by default. It is nothing but this one. The interface will be like this if you are using terminal from the Ubuntu based desktop. This is the username, this is the server name, this is the representation for the home directory. Tilde is a special character that is there as part of the keyboard. It represents the home directory of a given user. Uh, this is how the interface will be when you actually use a terminal on top of your Ubuntu based desktop. If you are using Ubuntu based desktop to practice uh, the Linux commands which I'm going to demonstrate as part of this course. Now, I will also demonstrate how to get the details uh, about the operating system. For that, there is a command called as uname. You can use it. You can say hyphen a. It will give you the details about the kernel uh, that is being used to set up this uh, virtual machine. You can actually go through the details. Don't worry to interpret uh, this at this time. For beginners, it is not very important, but you can always rely on this command to understand what is the operating system uh, that is being used when you actually get into any Linux based systems. It need not be Ubuntu based ones. There are quite a few other Linux based uh, operating systems. You can uh, uh, run this command on all those and you should be able to see the details like this. This is a Linux command, not Windows command. If you come out of this and if you run uname hyphen a, it will not work. You can see that uh, it is complaining that there is no such command. You can read the message here. The term uname is not re recognized as the name of a commandlet, which means there is no such command on Windows. But once you get into the Linux based machine, you should be able to run that uname hyphen a and you should be able to get the details about the operating system. This is how you can actually get started with your first command in Linux, uname hyphen a to get the operating system details. Also keep in mind that when you log in, 
if you are using ubuntu based desktop or even some other linux based desktops it will directly take you to the home directory not some directory like this because this virtual machine is set up using wsl on windows it is actually taking us to windows home directory not the linux home directory to go to the linux home directory you can always use cd and you can go to the linux home directory here which is nothing but tilde tilde is one of the ways to represent the home directory you can also run pwd command and also you can say echo dollar home you should be able to get the home directory details so cd is the command which will take you to the home directory respective of where you are you can run this command by being in any directory it will always take you to the home directory tilde represents the home directory pwd gives you the current working directory as we have ran cd command as we got into the home directory when we say pwd it is giving us the details about the home directory which is nothing but this one no matter where you are if you run this command it will give the details about what is the home directory for that user so in this case to get the home directory details you should be able to run this command this is the home directory for this user you not only learnt your name in this lecture you also understood some basics related to cd and also you have learnt pwd as well as echo with dollar home we'll actually go through the details about what is this dollar home and all at a later point in time don't worry too much if you do not understand completely that being said we just get started by running our first few commands now let's deep dive further to understand all the basics related to shell commands in linux as part of this lecture let's understand how to get help on linux commands many people tend to use google but using google for learning purpose can be very less productive or it can be counterproductive you might waste too much of time in googling around rather than learning it is very important for you to have structured learning also it is very important for you to refer to official documentation of the tool which is being explored or any technology which is being explored i follow this pattern not only to learn linux commands whether it is shell scripting or python based programming or java based programming i tend to use official documentation more often than googling around i use google very less that being said how to get help on linux commands for most of the commands there is control argument called as hyphen hyphen help or hyphen h i will also explain what is the control argument very soon first let's pick one command and try to explore how to get help there is also another way of getting detailed documentation for a given command when it comes to the linux it is called as man pages so either you use help or man pages i will not be focusing on too much related to man pages it will be overwhelming for the beginners but using help on top of command will actually give you required information to get started let me pick a command called as ls i will also use some other commands to actually demonstrate how to get help irrespective of the command which you are going to explore i pick ls because ls is the most commonly used command i'll be covering quite a few details related to ls very soon for now let's focus on how to get help on ls ls stands for list it is primarily used to list files and folders on linux file system now if you wanted to get help on ls there is a control argument called as hyphen hyphen help you should be able to use it you can see the output here it gives uh, quite a few details about how you can explore this command okay you actually go here there are quite a few other control arguments these are all nothing but control arguments which will actually uh, customize the behavior of the output of the command i will explain what control argument is in detail at a later point in time for now just keep in mind that you can actually see the usage of each and every control argument of a given command by just using ls hyphen hyphen help for some of the commands you might not get detailed information like this but for most of the commands you will get detailed information like this you should be able to review these things based upon the requirement and you should be able to use appropriate control arguments and you can actually get whatever details you are looking for that being said ls space hyphen hyphen help is the command to get the help keep in mind that when you try to learn shell commands on linux you need to make sure after the command you have space many people tend to run commands like this it will fail space is very very important in between if i say ls space hyphen hyphen help i'll be able to see the output now let's get help on another very important command which we might use very often it is nothing but grep so i can say grep and i can say hyphen hyphen help i should be able to get the uses of grep i should be able to scroll up here and i should be able to get the help on grep and these are the different control arguments which can be used to customize the behavior of grep 
Also, let me use another command. The other command which I'm going to use is nothing but cat. We use cat also very often to preview the data. You can actually say cat, then hyphen hyphen help. You should be able to get the usage of cat command also. You can see several control arguments that can customize the behavior of cat. Like this, you can explore any command. Make sure you are comfortable in getting the usage by running help command. This will provide you the relevant information for the version which you are going to explore. It is important from the perspective of any tool which you are going to explore, not just shell commands in Linux. If you are going to learn Python, you should know how to get help for a given function or class using appropriate code in Python. And you should rely on the first-hand information that is provided to you via the official documentation of the Python itself. Just keep in mind that you always refer to the official documentation while learning instead of Googling around. It is very, very important. If you just keep on Googling around without framing the question properly, you will be wasting a lot of time. As part of this lecture, I will walk you through the details related to files and folders. Most of you might be familiar about it, but it is very important for you to understand from the perspective of Linux as operating system. When it comes to Windows, you typically use it for watching movies, playing songs, take care of required documentation for your projects and all. But when it comes to Linux, especially from the perspective of day-to-day uh, -day usage as uh, engineers, we typically use it for completely other purposes. We might use it to save the files, to process the data in the files. The files can be text files or there can be data in other file formats also. Or you might end up deploying applications and run applications uh, in Linux-based environment. The applications generate logs. You might have to troubleshoot the issues by looking for certain things as part of those logs. The tasks which you typically perform on Linux is completely different. Now, before actually exploring the commands in Linux, it is very important for you to understand what is a file and what is a folder or what is a directory and you have to take it further. A file is nothing but a text file or mp4 file which contains the song, a docx which is nothing but word document, a pdf which contains pdf related content, it can be a csv file where you might have data, it can be a parquet file, even parquet files contain the data. So files contain either some content such as movie or files might contain only the data. It can be log file where you might have the log messages generated by the applications so and so forth. As we have understood some basics related to files, let's also uh, understand details related to folder. A folder is also known as a directory. If you are using Windows as operating system, Windows have graphical user interface. You should be able to review folders and files using this one. This is nothing but file explorer. You should be able to click on it and you should be able to see the files and folders in this. You don't uh, know whether these are folders uh, or files unless you interpret these icons or you can also check certain properties and you should be able to determine whether these are folders or files. You can also go to this folder called as downloads on Windows and you should be able to see several files uh, in it if you have downloaded anything into it. As of now, there are a couple of executables such as Chrome Setup, NPP 8.3.2 installer, and this is nothing but Notepad++, and also there is a file called as newusercredentials.csv. So there are few files in this folder. A folder can also contain other folders. For example, if I go to this PC, then if I go to C, C is nothing but uh, a drive in windows you see there are quite a few folders in it i can go to users folder then i can go to itversity which is my home directory you can see bunch of folders and files in this and now i can actually go to documents as of now documents is empty let me see if there's any folder which contain files let me actually go to favorites i think favorites is also empty favorites have a couple of things one folder and one shortcut and this is a shortcut in uh, Windows, there is a concept of shortcut. In Linux, we call it as softlink. Now, uh, this is about folders and files. You see, there is a path here. C drive, users, itversity, favorites. So, this is the path for this folder. This folder contains a folder and a file. A folder is nothing but favorites bar here. Bing is nothing but a file, which is a shortcut to Bing application. This is how it will look like in Windows. Now, when it comes to Linux, where you will be using uh, command line interfaces like this, you need to understand how to get the details about files and folders. I will actually walk you through those details as part of the next lecture. For now, keep in mind that there will be files which you have to deal with. And the files uh, are typically text files, MP4 files, and quite a few other types of files. Files can be part of folders. Folders are typically used to organize the files. You can actually have 
other folders in a folder over a period of time you, you will build a hierarchy and you should be able to navigate through all the folders and files whether it is uh, windows as operating system or mac as operating system or linux as operating system that being said we'll actually explore all the important commands to deal with files and folders over a period of time in series of lectures in this course as we have understood details related to files and folders, now it is time for us to understand a very important concept called as path. Any file or folder will have a path. A path can be either absolute path or fully qualified path, both mean same. And also it can be relative path. You need to understand the difference between these two. Absolute path, which is also known as fully qualified path versus relative path. You need to make sure you understand the difference between the two. Now, first let me explain the concept of absolute or fully qualified path using Windows. In this case, I am going to the file explorer here. Now, when it comes to Bing, which is nothing but a file shortcut to Bing application, the fully qualified path is nothing but C drive. It starts with the C drive, then users, then ITVersity, then favorites, then Bing. So this entire thing is nothing but fully qualified path or absolute path. You can also right click on it. Then you should be able to go to uh, properties. You should be able to get the complete path from here. You can go to the general. You can see the details here. However, it doesn't include the file name. You can actually right click. You can also copy as path. Then you should be able to paste. Let me paste here. You can see that it have actually included the file name also. This is nothing but the fully qualified path or absolute path for this file called as bing.url. The extension for bing is nothing but .url. That being said, this is nothing but fully qualified path. What is the relative path? Relative path is nothing but bing.url in this case when you are in this folder called as C users ITVST favorites. Relative path is nothing but the path which is relative to where you stand. It is important to understand the concept of uh, relative path. Now let me actually go to ITVersity. You can see contacts here and also downloads. Let me get into the downloads. Uh, the relative path from downloads with respect to this uh, chrome setup.exe is nothing but chrome setup.exe. But if I'm in the ITVersity folder, the relative path for the chrome setup.exe is nothing but downloads then uh, chrome setup.exe that is the relative path for chrome setup.exe from ITVST folder so that is the concept of relative path what is the path from the position where you stand at this time let me also explain from the linux perspective here now i am in this directory slash home slash dgadraju the fully qualified path or absolute path in linux starts with forward slash forward slash is also known as root directory under root directory you can see list of folders here how I can confirm whether a particular record is related to a folder or not you can actually look at this first character if it is D it is nothing but a folder I'll also walk you through these details at a later point in time in detail for now just observe this and you can confirm whether it is a folder or not also as you use modern uh, uh, Linux based systems there might be color coding as well like this all blue colored ones are nothing but folders that being said we have something called as home now let me actually go to home I have used fully qualified path. You can see that there is one folder called as dgadraju. Now I can actually say home dgadraju. This is the fully qualified path for dgadraju. Now there is a folder called as downloads. This is the fully qualified path for the downloads. I can say ls hyphen ltr. As of now there are two records. This is as part of this uh, Linux based system. I have downloaded it earlier. That's why I am seeing this. You might not see this. So the relative path for PyCharm community 2021.3.3 from downloads is nothing but this one itself. Now if I go to the home directory which is nothing but slash home slash dgadraju, the relative path for PyCharm community 2021.3.3 is nothing but PyCharm community, it is actually downloads and then PyCharm community hyphen 2021.3.3. This is the relative path from home directory, which is nothing but this one. It is very, very important for you to understand the relevance of uh, uh, the relative paths and also fully qualified or absolute paths. Now, uh, let me also show you how you can actually navigate the entities in other folders. For example, I am in the downloads folder. Okay, 
CD is a command which will facilitate you to get into a directory. CD stands for change directory. I have used relative path of downloads to get into the downloads folder. If I have to use fully qualified path, then it will be like this slash home slash the dgadraju then downloads. Uh, this is how you can actually specify fully qualified path to get into the downloads folder. Now there is another folder called as uh, desktop. Let's say I want to get into the desktop or there is another folder called as documents. Let's say I want to get into the documents folder directly. In this case, I am in the downloads folder and I want to get into documents folder directly. How to do that? If you want to use relative path, you can use this special command or special representation of something called as parent directory. Uh, when it comes to downloads, it is part of dgadraju. So dgadraju is nothing but the parent directory or parent folder to downloads. So dot dot actually represents the parent directory. So in this case, I'm saying cd dot dot, which will take me to home dgadraju. From there, the path for the documents is nothing but this one. So dot dot slash doc. Now you are in the documents folder. If you want to go to downloads again, you have to say cd dot dot which represents the parent folder for documents, which is nothing but this one. Then you have to use forward slash. Then you have to say downloads. You should be able to go to the downloads folder using the relative path approach. If you want to use fully qualified path to go to the documents folder, all you need to say is CD home dgadraju then documents. Now you can see that you are in the documents folder using fully qualified path. I can also go to the downloads from documents using fully qualified path like this. You can see that I'm in the downloads folder. That being said, it is very important for you to understand the meaning of fully qualified path or absolute path as well as relative path. And also you should know the meaning of dot dot. Dot dot represents the parent directory from the directory where you are in. Also, there is another important one, which is nothing but single dot. Single dot represents current directory. So now if I say CD just dot, you can see that it is still in the current directory because dot means current directory. However, if I say cd dot dot, you can see that it is taking to the parent directory of downloads, which is nothing but slash home slash dgadraju. So dot and dot dot are very, very important. The reason why I am emphasizing on dot and dot dot is when you actually go through some documentation or when you search for solutions on Google, the scripts might contain dot, 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 etc. You should know the meaning of those. That's why I'm actually emphasizing on dot as well as dot dot. Make sure you are really comfortable about it. Dot represents current directory. Dot dot represents the parent directory of the current directory. Also, you should be familiar about fully qualified path or, uh, or absolute path, both are same and also re relative path. You should also know how to navigate through the file system, leveraging relative paths as well as fully qualified or absolute paths. When you start running Linux shell commands, you might want to run previous commands. Also, you might want to see what all commands are run before. So there's a concept of history. You should be familiar about history and also you should practice enough so that you can use history as and when it is required so that you can actually collect the commands which are used in the past. It will be very helpful if you spend some time and understand the relevance of history. In this lecture, I'll give you some of the basics that are important with respect to history and also I'll be talking about some of the internals with respect to history. To get the history, there is a command in Linux. It is nothing but history. You just have to type history and you should be able to see the history. I have ran quite a few commands since I set up this environment and hence I'm able to see all those commands. As of now, I'm able to see 398 commands as part of the history. Keep in mind that over a period of time, you might end up running thousands of commands using your account on a given server or given virtual machine. It will not keep track of all the commands which you run over a period of time. There's a limit which is configured at the system level. The default is 1000 in most of the cases, which means it can store up to 1000 commands in the history. Now, to navigate through history, there are multiple ways. One of the ways is nothing but using up arrow. You can hit up arrow like this and you should be able to go back into the history one command at a time. Whatever you are seeing here, you will be going back one at a time. It will actually go back into the history in reverse chronological order. Reverse chronological order means start with the latest one and go back into the history. Now I'm hitting up arrow to go back into the history. If I wanted to fast forward, I can actually hit down arrow. If I hit down arrow, again, it will actually come towards the latest. So now I am at the empty line where I haven't entered any command. Now if I hit up arrow, you can see the latest command which is nothing but history here. If I hit up arrow again, you can see the previous command to history which is nothing but cd, so and so forth. Before cd, this is the command which was run and you can see that command here. This is how you can actually go back into the history. Now 
at times there might be too many commands and you might want to search for particular command for that you can use a shortcut called as control r you can see here it is saying reverse i search which means it will try to search in the reverse order starting from the latest based upon the string which you are actually entering here it will automatically suggest and it will take it further let's say i would like to search for e grep you see as a type e grep it have actually get into the latest e grep now if you hit enter it will run that command directly instead if you want to customize this command before running it instead of hitting enter you just hit side arrows it can be right side or left side it doesn't matter then instead of running that command it will actually uh, ask you to edit it before running it you can hit enter and you can run it directly if you want to update it to grep you can actually clean it up by removing e here and you should be able to run it this is how you should go back into the history search for a particular command and then you should be able to run it keep this in mind it will come very handy when it comes to searching for the commands also once you find a particular command if you want to go back into the history starting from that command what you are supposed to do is again hit control r search for e grep okay you can see the latest e grep command that is run which is nothing but this one now you can hit up arrow it will actually go back into the history from that command this is how you should be able to use searching effectively to go to the command which you want to run if you want to edit you can also edit yeah we understood the relevance of history and also the command history now let's get into the details about how this history is kept track in this case you are supposed to be in the home directory if you are in some other directory you can actually run cd command and you will end up in the home directory then there is a command called as ls hyphen a hyphen a will actually show the hidden files in this case i can say ls hyphen al it will actually list all the hidden files and regular files in this case i just want to search for those files which have history in them now i can pipe like this i'll be covering uh, quite a few details about piping and all at a later point in time we can also say grep and we should be able to search for history like this now you can see that there are two history files one is bash underscore history second one is python underscore history so if you run any python code all the python commands also will be kept track as part of python history file bash history is the one which actually keeps track of uh, the linux shell commands you can actually use a command called as tail it will facilitate us to preview last few lines in the file now i can say dot bash underscore history we should be able to see the contents in it you can see the output here now if you compare this output with the history command output it doesn't match it is because whatever you see as part of the history output the details will be checkpointed into this file only when we close this session or sometimes it might do some intermediate checkpoints also now let me exit from here let me run wsl command once again to get into this ubuntu based virtual machine now let me say cd now let me run tail dot bash history you can see the output here this time the output matches the history command very closely because we have exited and we have logged in back whenever we exit it will actually take care of running certain scripts internally it will take care of flushing whatever is there with respect to commands that are run in memory into the file that's when the dot bash history file will be updated now if i say history whatever output you are seeing it will match very closely with let's say tail hyphen 20 dot bash underscore history the last few commands will not match but rest of the commands should match you can see here whatever you ran before exit if you look at the output here and if you compare with these commands both match so it will actually update the dot bash history file or relevant history file only when you exit it is called as checkpointing checkpointing is a general concept where whatever is there in memory is actually written in a file at a specific event that being said this is about history and also some internals related to history make sure you are really comfortable with the history command it is a powerful tool you should be able to improve your productivity quite a lot by searching for uh, already run commands in the history instead of typing and making too many mistakes and then struggling to troubleshoot it will improve your productivity and hence i would highly recommend you to come up with your own scenarios and practice uh, around history try to search for a certain pattern in history and then see whether you will be able to pick that command edit that command and run it it is very very important for you to spend some time on history and be comfortable with it